The 131, fellas, on the ice, what makes it work so well? Well, let's take a look at it and we'll run through it. But you heard what Alex Ovechkin said is there's a lot of optionality. It doesn't matter how the defenders play. You know you've got options. And the 1 3 1, Stu, it's been around for a while. Yep. It's not that new. I really felt that San Jose took it to another level a few years ago, and everybody seems to have copied it to a higher degree yeah. and made it better. Personnel has certainly made it better. But let's take a look at San Jose. Oh, let's start with Tampa's power play first. Okay, here we are right off the face off and stop it right there, fellas. Okay, you can see Tampa right here getting into that one and then you've got one, two, three across and one guy up high. Okay, they are using one defenseman as in Victor Hedman and then they've got four forwards, which Joe was talking about. Very common in today's game. Go ahead and roll a little bit and stop it right there. This is an easy play for Hedman. He's got two easy options. When I say optionality, this was one on his forehand. This is another one back against the green. He elects to go to the wall. That's what the 1-3-1 one, one does. It draws a crowd a lot of the time in the middle as you see three players tied up. Go ahead and run it again. And there's a shot right there. I love what Tampa does right here, though. It's really remarkable. Braden. Right there, point and Stamkos interchange, and that opens up all kinds of possibilities. That's an easy goal for him. We'll come back to that bumper player because Stu's got some great stuff on that. Let's take a look at this one again for Tampa. Freeze it. Right here, you've got your one, two, three across. Palat down front is your net man. Hedman is up high. Heads are up. High tip potential. One-timer potential with Kucherov. Makes it awful darn easy. Go ahead and run it from there. There's a fake, allows Hedman to come in. Now you got a juicy rebound, ends up in the back of the net. When you have a guy with an IQ like Stamkos or Point or Kucherov yeah. or even Pilat or Hedman, you got a lot of optionality. Let's see in the next one that we took a look at here, Boston. Okay, another team. It's not just Tampa. Sure, they have the best power play in the league right now, but freeze it right there. One, two, three. Net front presence with DeBrus. Pasternak, we know how dangerous he is. Bergeron, he's in a tip position. Marchand down low, he wants the puck. And of course, you got Tori Krug, a guy that is a very, very good distributor. Go ahead and run it a little bit. Here comes the shot. It gets blocked. Doesn't matter when you have high hockey IQ. Stop it. Pasternak immediately reads what Krug is doing right here. He releases off of his point, and that's an easy backdoor goal right there really wrecks havoc with these guys. They're not sure there's so much optionality. Go ahead and run the next one, please. Why don't we go to, oh, I don't know. We'll see if we have another Boston. We'll go to another team. Go ahead and pull it up. There's some happy guys. We'll jump over to San Jose now and see what they're doing, because that was a team I mentioned had really started it off. And freeze it right there. Here you go. One, two, three. Joe Pawlowski, we know how great he is with his nut front present Stu you know how he can yeah, tip without pucks. question you got Brent Burns in the back end here you can't really see him but what you should recognize fans is that the San Jose Sharks have two of the best defensemen in the National Hockey League and Eric Carlson and Brent Burns but what do they do they split them up it gives them two dynamic units and quite frankly I like this power play unit better without Eric Carlson with this group yeah. of guys. He's got Gives his own you, group. He's been really successful. When you think about it, too, better balance. And this guy is a key cog. We can't see him right in this slot yep. right here, but it kind of, he's, at, you might even argue there's two QBs in all this. It's your half ball guy and it's your sure. point guy. But Carlson and Burns in that spot on two separate power plays gives you great balance across both your units. Now watch this play right here. Go ahead and roll it. You're going to see a quick bump pass. And that's just wow. practically impossible wow. for Washington to defend. That's in the back of your net. We could take another one. Here's Eric Carlson out here now. This is the other unit. Equally as good. All you got to do is move it to Couture. Can we back that up for one second, though? Let's back it up till Carlson has it right at the top. Right there. Okay, now you've got the puck in one of the elite defenders in the National Hockey League's hands. He's in a great position for shooting the puck. He's in a good position for finding Couture. He's in a good position for moving it over here to Kevin LeBanc. Now, what does he do? He makes the right read. He's got high hockey IQ. That's what I love. Go ahead and run it, and you'll watch this goal. He holds it, holds it, holds it. Arizona has an excellent PK. Doesn't matter. Beautiful goal. 
Let's take a look, Stu, at what you came up with with the bumper player, because I know you love that. I do, and it's really, to me, the coolest innovation about the whole 131. The bumper guy is essentially that guy that plays in the middle between the hash marks in that danger kind of area. Let's spot this first power play. We've got uh, Bergeron. This is the Boston setup again, yep. and typically Bergeron, he's the guy we call the bumper guy, and you'll see why. Go ahead and roll it from there. He's going to be able to distribute from that inside position. He's a guy that can, in tight spaces, lay it off. He's going to catch a pass right here. Watch how he lays it back to Pasternak. Change the point of attack. Our guy right here in front, our low guy, the point on the attack. He's going to be able to make that tip that's DeBrusque in front after the shot. Again, roll it back just a second, guys. Roll it back to just uh, what I wanted to highlight here with his tire shot. A little bit more, a little bit more. Notice as Bergeron. Roll it forward from there and freeze. He's not even going to look at Pasternak. He's going to catch that pass there. He's going to distribute back to Pasternak, but he hasn't even given you the impression that he's going to do that. It creates all that space for Pasternak. Go ahead and roll it forward from there. No look, no nothing. He trusts that he's there. Let's go to, we're going to work on, there's a there's a shot option for the bumper guy through here. Tampa gives us a good setup, yeah, and we've already seen a play does. like this. Point plays well in here. Point is our guy right here. He'll roll out higher. He's ultimately going to be our bumper guy. Watch the play he makes. This is the shot option for the 1-3-1 one, one for that bumper guy. Go ahead and roll it from there, guys. Watch Point kind of roll into that space. He's ultimately going to take a pass from Kucherov down here. Watch him right there in that bumper spot. Grab it, cradle it, pivot towards the net. Here's a tighter look. Watch Point right here. Eyes on Point. I want you to notice just stop there for a second. Notice his body position right now. He's actually facing away from the net. He's anticipating, trying to show that he's available for that pass. Watch him pivot towards the net as he catches that pass. Go ahead and roll it. Pointed away from the net, but still manages Never to pivot. Extremely, yeah. extremely yeah. dangerous from there.